everyone, it's Robin, R. Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you the crafty goodness that I worked on this week. My patrons and I worked on a paper piece pattern. This is another free pattern that I found on the Craftsy blog. If you're looking for fun things to make, some small quick projects, check out the Craftsy blog, even though I haven't looked to see if they have anything new and updated, but when it was Craftsy the first time around, for those of you that were out for a while, you know what, from Craftsy to, I don't know what it was, like Blueprint or something like that, and then back to Craftsy again. I'm not even sure if they're doing much updating on that website, but the blog is there from all the previous years, and you can find a lot of fun projects. As you can see, I stitched everything down with the buttonhole stitch. I don't do very many paper piece patterns. I know the basic techniques, so when it comes to that, I'm reasonably okay. I find for me with paper piecing, if I don't do it very often, it takes me a few tries to kind of get warmed up to it again, so to speak. Now this pattern did not include the cloud. That is something that we added on extra. It's a little, not super poofy, but it does stick out a little bit higher than the rainbow. So if you're interested in this mug rug, it is listed in my Etsy shop. I also went through and listed the rest of the apple and pumpkin mug rugs. Sorry, I got a little interrupted there by one of those little robo collars. I swear they always call whenever I'm trying to make a video. But that's really not saying much because they call throughout the day and on the weekends and on Sundays and I digress. Back to the crafty goodness that keeps us happy. It took me a second to realize what I was talking about. Okay, the drawstring bags that weren't listed from last week, they are all listed into the shop now. So I just thought I'd give you a little catch up here on my embroidery projects, the birdie stitches and the mushroom house that I'm working on with the knit group. I think the only thing I had left to do on this project was I used a dark brown as suggested by the design. I used two strands and I just outlined everything. I created my windows. I put a little French knot for the doorknob. So that's done, and there is my back. Not too bad because of the type of stitches that I used. I only have crazy threads when I went from area to area with my cream dots. I also worked on my birdie stitches. So I have September finished. As you can see, I haven't given any of these a press. They still have my little hoop marks. There's no sense for me to press one at a time unless I'm going to work on that one. When I go to sit down and turn them into their little mini quilts, then I'll just give them all a good press. So I don't know if you can see that green on here. I love this little color of a green on the birdie. And I did the variety of the leaves just to give it that nice autumn feel. Since we don't have anything like this here in my area of Florida, I wanted to bring a bunch of color in. I also finished October's. I thought it was really fun. I chose this color for the moon. It's kind of a blue silvery gray, but as soon as I put it on, I realized it matches the blue that I used to outline everything really well. So it's subtle, but it's there. My yellow stars. There's my spiders. And my pumpkins. I love my pumpkins. I went with a bright orange. I'd actually planned on putting the darker orange on the bottom and the lighter on top because darker things are heavier, so they go on the bottom. But I guess in my excitement to stitch and not paying attention, I started right in with that guy. It looks perfectly fine. I thought about changing the leaf and the little vine color so that each one had a different color but I have this really bright, fun green, and I didn't want to bring in a dark, you know? I tried all different greens. I was laying the floss down to see what it looked like, and I just didn't like it, so I thought, well, why not? Who says I can't have them all be the same? Just because the pumpkins are a different color doesn't mean the leaves and vines need to be. Little spider down there. Now my spiders are actually a purpley maroon. I didn't use a black. A lot of times when you see a purple, it just looks like black because it's so dark anyways. 
but when the light hits it just right, you can see this maroony purple color. It's not quite purple, not quite red, it's just a nice mixture. My stem, I went with a little rust color. I was just having a lot of fun using different colors, like my birdie's a periwinkle, so it is purple, but it's not purple. The stem is brown, but it's not brown. And I think just fun to take all the different embroidery floss options that we have and play with it and make something fun. If DMC is gonna provide hundreds of colors for us, why stick with the basic eight Crayola colors? And then I started in on my November Thanksgiving one. And I did the same thing with this block. My yellow for the bird is a, kind of an orangey color. I think of it as like an autumn corn, so it's not like a bright yellow, but it just kind of dulls it and subdues it a little bit. I have the nice brown, and then I just have to decide on these. Now, of course, with my brain, I'm looking at this, and I'm like, candy corn, candy corn, candy corn, corn, candy corn, candy corn, 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 corn. But, of course, I need to use some type of fun colors. And I think I'm going to stick with more muted colors and have more of the, of course, for the fall, have more of the browns and orange, reds, and yellows that are a little bit on the, the duller side that, as I said, muted. As I'm showing you all of these things, the next thing that I'm going to say is going to not sound right, but I lost my creativity this week. Yes, I did work on a lot of things, but you might notice that I didn't work on any bags, no table runners, table toppers, none of those types of piecing type projects that you start with a thought and a design in your mind and you work your way through and you finish and when you see the finished item you're like yep that's exactly what it was supposed to be i felt very blocked this week but i know myself and if i were to just sit in front of the tv and either do the embroidery or just sit the knit or even just sit and read or stare at the tv for several days it will take me longer to get that creativity back so i forced myself Force is a strong word, but I decide that I'm going to keep touching fabric in some way. Now, what I should have done was go into the fabric room and clean, but I definitely wasn't feeling motivated for that. And if I were to do a chore that I don't want to do, and that doesn't have to be done, I can just close the door. It's not that bad in there. I just want to make it more workable and less hunt and seek. You know how it is when you know you have something, but you don't know where you put it? Yeah, that's how that room is. It's semi-neat, but I don't know where half the stuff is that I need. I still haven't found the bias tape maker. Or the Halloween bunting, which is one of the things I was going in there to look for. Anyway, so I decided to sit down and play with my scraps. By playing with my scraps and just randomly sewing things together, <coughs> keeps me touching fabric and seeing the colors and hopefully it'll make my mind just slowly get right back to its normal creativity. And if I take itty bitty scraps and I sew like crumb blocks, it's not gonna matter. If I take some pieces and I sew it together and it becomes something ugly, again, it's still not going to really matter. So in the end, I feel like I've started to feel my creativity. I woke up this morning, it's Monday morning, and I feel better. I feel like I can go ahead and jump into the week and start getting things done. My little session of just playing for a day or two actually helped. Of course, I did take a good part of yesterday off to do the embroidery, but it's still playing with something colorful, playing with fibers and being creative. So sometimes when we lose our mojo and we just don't feel like doing things, we can either take a step back, go for a walk, work out in our garden, or sometimes we just need to keep our fingers into what we're doing and just keep playing with fabric. And sometimes for me, just folding my fabric and putting it on the shelves nice and neat helps because I'm constantly seeing the fabric and maybe I'll see something that I hadn't seen before and it'll spark a little creativity. I'll be like, I could make such and such and such with this. So I went into that messy section of my fabric room that really needs to be a little organized. And I just grabbed some of my Ziploc baggies here of fabric scraps. Sometimes these scraps are ones that you guys have sent me. Like I have this Halloween one for postcards. So now I can work on some Halloween fabric postcards. 
thank you for sharing your scraps when you guys are so sweet and generous and you share your scraps with me if you send me things that are already sewn together but you didn't use them for whatever reason maybe you cut too many half square triangles and you decided you didn't need them for a pinwheel there are four here so these could become a pinwheel or something else they were a little larger than what I needed for the little sewing session I was doing but in this baggie were also several other little pieces and I'll show you when we get to that so there were other half square triangles other red ones so keep your eye out for that I found these in there these were all just sewn together in groups of two I was making little friendship bags with these and these are the extra ones that were left over which is why some of them are the green polka dots with the monsters and some have the animals. I did not pay attention when I sewed these together, but I could have gone every other and made a little bit of a pattern, which probably would have been a good idea. But I do plan on chopping into this some more once I'm done pulling all the loose threads out. So this was a, okay, I need to sit with this. I didn't want to chop it up too much to a fabric postcard. I thought maybe this could go as is into a zipper pouch or something. So I just stopped and I will put this back into a different basket where I have larger pieces like this for projects. I find this works really well for my brain and the way that I do my projects so that I have already had starts so if I want to make a whole bunch of zipper pouches I already have something there I can leave it as is I can go ahead and unstitch it and make it every other which even I'm thinking that that might need to be done and I don't have an OCD creative mindset that doesn't bother me if things are a little bit off then I found this and I don't know if this is something that was sent to me or something that I stitched together. I do recognize just about all of these fabrics so this might have been something that I had. As you can see it is not perfect. There's all different sides and edges that don't match up. When I pulled this out of one of my little Ziploc baggies it was two long strips of fabric and I say long not too super long. So I took the strips with all the squares and I folded it in half like this. And then I stitched all along the edge. I don't have a good example, but I have this strip. So let me show you on here. So I had this strip, the squares were all sewn together. I took them right sides together and I stitched all the way along this edge here. And I took my scissors and I just clipped off this edge so that I can then open it up and I had the two rows sewn together. And since I had two strips, I then had enough to make this little block. Again, I was gonna make fabric postcards with it because that's what I was doing this weekend. And I decided that I liked the way this looked. So maybe I will just consider this a, a little hot pad or something like that, a little pot holder, or I can turn this into a drawstring bag, build it out a little bit, make it into something, or I could just call this a mug rug. Mug rugs don't all have to be rectangular. They can be any size you'd like. I've seen candy corn mug rugs and ghost shaped mug rugs. So who's to say that I couldn't square this up and quilt it up and have that as a mug rug. So by the time I got done with doing all of this, as I said, I was starting to feel a little bit more creative. At least I wasn't feeling blocked. I was feeling that uh, happy for the future that there was going to be another creative day coming really soon. So when I have a few minutes or I have another one of those ho-hum days, I can always go into my scrap container and take some of the fun scraps that you guys have sent me, mix it in with mine. So I do receive some scraps like this, actually more often than I thought I would, and it looks like they're from squaring up half square triangles possibly. So they are stitched together and they create this mitered corner. So I'm holding on to these because I'm trying to let my brain percolate a little bit and come up with something fun to do with these because I have a bunch of them in this container here that that's a lot of fabric I could cut this off I could take out the seam ripper and just you know use these as little bits but I want to see if I can stretch my brain a little bit and have something fun from all of these scraps I received these also so I thought these all went together. They're all basically from the same fabrics. 
and they're all rectangles and strips like that so I thought that would be fun to create something scrappy with so I don't have to think I don't have to like oh well, I'm going to make a friendship star I'm gonna make a nine patch I'm gonna make a beautiful pineapple block no I can just sit here and sew and if it doesn't turn out right I can turn it into just about anything I can turn it into pot holders and coasters and stuff like that not everything has to be beautiful it just needs to be useful one way or the other so this is just a way for me to honor the scraps that you've been sending me and to stretch my creativity a little bit even though I'm going to show you fabric postcards a fabric postcard I've made hundreds of them that's not super creative Robin you make them all the time but I made them a little differently and I made them based on the scraps I had these two are the ones from that fabric that had the half square triangles in it these were already sewn together. There was a strip of pinwheels all sewn together, so I left them as is, and I decided to give it a little bit of interest to put it diagonally on here. When I put it from left to right, there was a quarter of the pinwheel hanging off the edge and it just looked weird, but by putting it diagonally, you get the main idea, and then even though these have been chopped off, it's still kind of fun. Plus, I love that fabric. I decided to just stick with red with it. I could have brought in some of the aquas, but my aqua bin isn't super full, and I just didn't want to dig into it quite yet. Not when I knew that the red would work really well. And this way, the white and those aquas and oranges can pop off against the red. There were also these little mini guys. I guess whoever had sent them to me, thank you so much again. They hadn't turned them into pinwheels, and I didn't want to turn them into pinwheels. These were all different sizes, so I really wasn't sure, you know, do I trim them down? And I decided, you know what, I'm just going to sew them all together. And even though this guy isn't sewn exactly the same because he was larger, I probably should have trimmed him down, but it adds a little character to it. And until this very moment, I didn't even notice it. So it's perfectly fine. There were some pieces that had white and then this fabric and then white in a three strip rectangular type thing. So I took this color off of the extra whites that were in there and I just popped it on each end here just to make sure it was wide enough for a fabric postcard. Again, add my red strips, do a whole bunch of straight line quilting, and I have a fabric postcard that's ready for the shop. So these two will be going into the shop. So some of them were a little bit wider. So there were these two pieces that were sewn together that had a bit more of a bulk to it. There was this green fabric with it also. You can tell it has all of the same colors and you can also tell I haven't hit anyone with the lint roller yet. So I decided to use that green and just bulk it out a little bit. As you can see, it's a little bit off center, which is kind of fun and quirky. And I took those long strips of the jelly roll race that I was creating. And before I sewed everything together, I made this card and I stitched them around the edge, just again to bulk it out to the right size and to have a little fun. When I had the panel, I would just take my little six and a half by six and a half ruler because I trim my fabric postcards to four and a half by six and a half. And I would just flip flop it around and cut out pieces that looked interesting. And then I would put them on the postcard. So this is more of, I guess, a modern quilting look. When modern quilting first started out, I've been listening to it a lot on the Stitch Show. And Lynn was talking about how they used a lot of solid fabrics and big open spaces. I don't have big open spaces, but I do have the solid fabrics. So I thought that was fun to put it in the vertical direction and some of them were horizontal there's another horizontal one and then i had some of the bits left over and they weren't big enough to put on there so, so i brought in my own green fabric that was pretty close to that one and just bordered it up a little bit added some down there and a little white and green up the top so you think like this whole panel was together but really it's just this little section here five little rows and I added three more on just to again bulk it up a little bit with the squares I had some that were not narrow strips and not large squares so I put those together here white borders and there you go 
There were thin, narrow strips in one of those Ziploc baggies in a separate baggie. This one has some Christmas in it. I see three Christmas and then just some randoms. I had this sulky thread. It is silky, shiny, strong, washable and dry cleanable. It's a 40 weight rayon. It's a brand new spool. I've never used it before. I was always worried I wouldn't be able to use it in the sewing machine. I've tried the monofilament and struggled with it. That was early on in my quilting, so I need to try it again just to see how I can do it. I'm sure I can do it now, but it was really fun. I happened to have a like a light lilac -y color purple in the bobbin, and I just left it down there. I don't really see the purple at all so the tension is really great on this and I just free motion quilted it. I threw some stars in to go with the Christmassy and just to practice the stars. I did some loop-de-loops. Granted this is a small fabric postcard. It's not a lot of quilting on it but I did do a little bit of a warm-up so if I were to get ready to free motion quilt a quilt I would have it all warmed up and ready to go. And if I could free motion, I wanted to see if I could also use it up in just some little straight line and it worked beautifully. So now I know I can use a few of the different fancier threads that I've been holding on to for a while. So as you can see, it's a lot of talking for just silly little postcards. I chopped this one also, practiced my free motion on it. Of course it doesn't show through, which is great. But it got me back into sewing and putting pieces together and just having some random fun. Did I make something beautiful? Not really, but I did practice my free motion. I now know that I can use that thread and I have a fabric postcard with some fun polka dots and little doggies on it. A semi holiday-ish one. So I think they worked out really well. These scraps were fun to sew with. And I definitely love these two. I put the rest away because I want to show you some of the other ones I made. And I did something a little different with these, similar but different. And I really love the way these turned out. I received two pieces of this fun, colorful kitty cat silly fabric. So I thought there's blue and green and pink in it. So I added borders because this was it. It had a little bit of a wonk off to the side somewhere that I ended up cutting off and throwing away. But I took this throwaway scrap that someone so generously shared with me and I made a fun fabric postcard. Here was the other one. It looks like they were all playing musical instruments, which I didn't notice right away. So this isn't the tail of a dragon or another cat like I thought. There is an instrument up there. And then we have them down here. Cellos, those are huge. You need to be a big cat to be playing a cello. Again, I just brought in my pink and I have this fun green scraps that go with the little bits of green in it. And they brought the yellow out. That was fun. I also received this, I'm guessing it's just basically beer because it says brewery. They look like beer bottles. But this one looks like it says ragu for like the pasta sauce, but I'm sure it doesn't. Put it there, added some warm browns to the side. So now you have a nice fabric postcard for the gentleman in your life or for anyone that is into beers or breweries, microbreweries. I know this is probably not microbrewery beer, but I wouldn't know. It looks like it's German. But you have something fun like that that you can share with someone else in your life. These were all the ones that I created and put together. The other ones that I finished up is I just did the stitching on the ones that I've already shown you. So now all of these are ready to either go into the shop or to go into my fabric postcard collection for giving away to you guys. So now that brings me to our crafty word of the day and I also have a little update for you. Your crafty word of the day is music. Do you play any instruments? Do you love to listen to music? I listen to a variety of things, but mostly I enjoy either country or the 80s. I love listening to my 80s radio show. Now for the update. I want to thank everyone who's been giving me their mailing addresses for the fabric postcards. I think we need to simplify this and make it a little bit easier. I am going to choose one video a month. I'm leaning towards maybe the first Whip It Wednesday of the month. 
I will continue to give you scrappy words each video, but only on that one first Whip It Wednesday of the month will I draw postcards winners. That way you guys know one video to keep an eye on, to watch your comments for, to come back and check on to see if you want a fabric postcard. Hopefully that'll make it easier for me to keep track and for you guys to keep track so there's just one dedicated spot. So please keep using the scrappy word of the day. Many of you enjoy using it and it allows you to leave fun comments or just to leave any type of comment, which I love interacting with you. That way I can recognize your names. I love seeing new names that are either new to the channel or haven't been here for a while. So we'll continue with the scrappy word of the day, but I will choose one winner two winners, five winners. Depends. Maybe I made a bunch of fabric postcards and I'd like to send them all out so I might choose more names. And of course, when we get closer to the holidays, we have to have more winners. I would love it if you go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. That will help you keep track of my videos and know when they're coming out. If YouTube isn't letting you know all the time, there is a link down below in the description box so that you can sign up to a free notification system where the company that I'm using will email you anytime I put out a video. Recently, I put out the How I Fold Fat Quarters video and that came out at, I think, 10 p.m. on Sunday evening, which is totally random because that's not my normal time or my normal day so that you don't miss out on those. Click the little subscribe button, ring the bell, hit all notifications, and sign up for the free notification system. All right, I know this is a long video, but I have one little thing I'm going to tag on to the end. A hot air balloon landed basically at the end of my driveway. I didn't see it land. Miss Mocha, my kitty cat, caught it. I just happened to get out of the shower and she'd open up the curtain here in the craft room and I saw something weird out there and I went and checked and it was a hot air balloon just laying down. I'm really a little disappointed that I missed seeing it land across my very busy four lane road that you can hear the traffic go by in all of my videos. So if you made it this long, here is your reward. A hot air balloon laying on its side in my yard. Not my yard, but close enough. Thank you and good night. Guys, check it out. What's in my front yard? It's a balloon. A balloon. I don't know if it's taken off or if it landed. I was getting dressed out of the shower and the next thing I knew, Mocha was staring out the craft room window like, what the heck's going on out there, Mama? It's a balloon. They know I'm recording them, so it just really feels awkward, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna come back up on my porch. Yeah, Cause like right there's my mailbox. There's my car, my driveway. There's the road you guys hear all the time. It's a balloon. Isn't that cool? So I'm gonna guess that normally it's packed away in that itty bitty trailer there. Guys, I love balloons. I love balloons. I'm not the only one watching. How cool is that? There's no wires or anything. This is actually a good spot for them. This is where the silly thing to say, this is where the dump trucks stop, that they can lift up their big arm and dump everything into the back of their trash because there are no wires here. Because they're actually, they're right here. And then they run up through here so they're nowhere near there so there's no wires anywhere until you get to the other road so it's really kind of cool and gives them that space because there's just like a mess of stuff over there to get into my kids used to actually fly kites and stuff in the backyard of course because it's not a safe place for them to fly kites but how cool is that Oh, there's the basket now. I can see the basket over there. I can't see anything with the sun rising right there. So I hope you guys can see a little bit of something something. Because you know my photo editing skills are not all that great. Wow. It's just a bunch of 
older people. <laughs> I think they're having the time of their life. I sure wish I would have seen what happened, but I know I was in the shower and stuff. The other side of the house. Super cool. Alright, I'm gonna stop it for a second because between you and I, I just like threw on some clothes and ran out the door super quick when I caught this out of the corner of my eye. So I'm gonna go and finish doing what I have to and I'm gonna keep the curtain open and I have my little crumb curtain in the craft room. So, oh, they're rolling it up. So, okay, so I'm guessing this is where they landed. So that's how they roll it up to get all the air to come out. That's just super cool. Oh, I wish I was out here earlier. This would have been a good day to be like out doing yard work and mowing or something so that you can just watch it come down. That is just like super, super cool. Hopefully someone else. I mean, I don't see anyone else doing anything. But it would have been nice if someone else had caught it to see it on the news tonight, you know? So, that's it. I'm going to let it end here and go do my stuff.